Welcome everyone. In this uh, lecture, I will talk to you about muscles of thigh. So first of all, before I start talking about the muscles there, I would like to explain or to uh, discuss with you uh, or talk a little bit about the uh, um, fascia of the thigh. Well, it's good to remind you about the fascia of um, the, superficial, the superficial fascia of the abdomen, then we will shift to that of the lower limb. Now, I think from the abdomen uh, in the uh, previous semester, we talked in details about the layers of the anterior abdominal wall and including the, of course, the superficial fascia. And we mentioned that in the abdomen, you have two layers for superficial fascia. You have the fatty layer, which that known as cambrous fascia, and you have a membranous layer in a blue color, which is the scarps fascia or membranous layer of superficial fascia. So, the uh, uh, the um, uh, fascia of the thigh, of course, you have superficial fascia and deep fascia. The superficial fascia of you see here is the dotted line that indicates the border between the abdominal wall and the lower limb. So here is the uh, fatty layer or the superficial fascia of the lower limb that's continuous of course with the superficial um, uh, superficial fatty uh, layer of the uh, abdomen and over the rest of the body on the other hand the deep fascia just when you remove this fatty layer of course you will find the green one which is that the green color you see this green color it indicates uh, this is an indication to the deep fascia of the thigh that's known as fascia lata so the fascia lata or the deep fascia of the thigh um, united one finger breadth below the inguinal ligament this is the inguinal ligament so the deep fascia of the thigh or fascia lata fused with the membranous layer um, of the superficial fascia of the abdomen that known as carbs fascia so this blue color which is the membranous layer of superficial fascia of the abdomen uh, so the, known as carbs fascia right so it fuses one finger breadth this is the inguinal ligament so one finger breadth below the inguinal ligament is the line of effusion of scarps fascia with the fascia latte uh, fascia lata or the fascia of the thigh now um yes as i mentioned nothing new to talk about here is the uh, superficial fascia of the uh, lower limb that continues uh, uh, up over the rest of the body abdomen and so forth and there is a deep fascia of the uh, lower limb and here is like uh, I will leave it for now but uh, here is the uh, deep fascia that fuses as I mentioned with the scarves fascia of the abdomen one finger breadth below the inguinal ligament and the clinical significant here this um clinical note already uh, as you see here repeated because it was discussed in the anti in the abdominal wall so and there is video on youtube also you can watch it in details but in harry um the membranous layer of superficial fascia the blue one i will use the blue color so it's continuous above the penis as you see here and up a little bit then it uh, uh, fades up right and disappeared and also it continues around the scrotum as you see here all the way back to reach the perineum that means if you get a rupture in the penile urethra here, so the urine will extravasate around the penis, as you see the arrows, and here around the penis, and also in the scrotum, and the urine will reach also to the perineal area. Plus, it will ascend between the gap between the pubis and anterior abdominal wall 
to the lower part of the abdomen here. But if you look here again to the scarps uh, fascia, you will find it. Yes, here is the urine can extravasate, as I mentioned, but it will stop at the line of fusion between the scarps fascia and the fascia lata or the deep fascia of the thigh because there is a line of fusion so the urine will not uh, moved or fused uh, uh, will not uh, diffused to the lower limb because here is a point of fusion here and there so it will be restricted and you will not find the urine there okay here's the uh, uh, in summary the uh, uh, clinical significant of the uh, knowing the superficial fascia and the uh, super deep fascia of the thigh but let me show you here a general overview for the fascia lata or the deep fascia of the thigh look at it here it's like a trouser uh, around the lower limb and superiorly it attached to the anterior to the inguinal ligament and laterally to the as you see here to the upper part of the ilium right furthermore uh, the laterally the deep fascia as we mentioned in the previous lectures it's gonna uh, uh, thicken laterally to form a band known as iliotibial tract this is the iliotibial tract in which it attached to the iliac tubercle as you see here uh, or you can call it tuberculum of iliac crest or iliac tubercle and laterally to the uh, lateral condyle of uh, tibia the iliotibial tract uh, receives as you see insertion from this muscle which is the tensor fascia lata and from the gluteus maximus you look how they inserted really in the at the surface at the um, iliotibial tract and the iliotibial tract as you see it sustained or maintains the extended uh, uh, knee or leg and it prevents the lateral dislocation uh, up of the head of the femur uh, inside the acetabulum right so uh that was uh, the main point about the attachment and extinction of uh, uh, fascia lata or the deep fascia of the thigh but anteriorly there is a hole it's like an opening known as saphenous opening this opening is the saphenous opening why it's called saphenous opening because maybe you know that this is the great saphenous vein it will drain the blood uh, uh, superficially of course from the lower limb uh, all the way up until it reaches and drain into femoral vein so it pierces the deep fascia through this or it passes through this opening the opening in the deep fascia that known as saphenous opening because the blood of saphenous great saphenous veins should be drained into femoral vein this is a femoral vein right so let me erase this and again this is the um saphenous opening and uh, where is located you can uh there are two ways to uh, approximate its location one way you can say uh well it's just inferior to the media this is the inguinal ligament so it's just inferior to the medial end of inguinal ligament or you can say it's just four centimeters uh below and lateral to the um pubic tubercle right so about four centimeters right below and lateral to it so this is the location of saphenous opening now a couple of structures pass from there including although it's not um, very well explained here but you will um, it's an opening for a great saphenous vein and it attributes plus um, branch of femoral um, artery outside plus of course lymphatics or lymphatic vessels so
dig deep a little bit more on the Safinas opening. Look at it here. You can see that uh, you can again not the inguinal ligament and pubic tubercle and its location there. And you can notice that this is the lower and lateral margin of this opening, this margin called falciform margin, falciform margin in which it passes uh, just anterior to the um, femoral vessels, including femoral artery and femoral vein. So it's anterior to them. But this, um, uh, I would say medially, because this is medial, right? This is the penis and this is the scrotum. So medially, guys, the um, it continues and uh, just below, and uh, I would say under the femoral vein. Look at it here. It moved just under the femoral uh, vein to attach to the bictinal line of the pelvis. I will show you in the next uh, couple of slides how it's really the uh, saphenous uh, opening medially continues um, behind the femoral uh, vein to, uh, to attach to the bictinal uh, line of the pelvic bone and of course it's uh, it will not open like that of course it will be covered by cribriform fascia okay and you have to know that the thigh divided by the deep fascia into uh, three compartments uh, so look at the skin outside then deep to it you have a superficial fatty layer or superficial fascia and deep to it there is a blue color here you see if you trace or you follow the, the, the blue color you will find that it sends kind of uh, uh, septa to the toward the uh, bone so let me circle it at the first so this is the deep fascia that encircles the muscles and at the same time from there it sends septa to the inside of the thigh in order to attach to the bone by this way the thigh divided into anterior compartment medial compartment and posterior compartment so i will start now with the anterior compartment of the thigh is the most interesting uh, part of the thigh and uh, what i want to uh, uh, focus now is uh, that the anterior compartment, this is the anterior compartment of the thigh, you see the um, red color, the dark uh, red color here. So this is the anterior, the muscles in the anterior compartment plus these uh, couple of two, uh, these couple of muscles here. So you have muscles that will flex the hip and you have muscles that will flex uh, sorry, extend the uh, knee. So you have muscles flexor of the hip and extensor of the knee. I will show you how those um, uh, muscles can flex the hip and extend the uh, knee. So, but in Harry, uh, you have the sartorius muscle, you have the iliosaurus, including the iliacus and the sawas major, we call them both sisters, ilio sawas um, muscle, and you have pectineus uh, uh, muscle, and um, of course you have a big muscle here anteriorly uh, that has four um, hits, we call it quadriceps um, femoris muscle, quadriceps femoris muscle all of these muscles when i mentioned they are innervated mainly by femoral nerve so let us start with the uh, sartorius sartorius that known as taylor's muscle or the muscle of the tailor um, 
why it's called that because this is an easy way to remember the action of this muscle first of all uh, you have to know the origin and session of this muscle to understand its function so very simple its origin from well-known landmark that you know it is the anterior superior iliac spine you can of course palpate it and feel it there and it's inserted medially in the you see where is it in the um, uh, upper medial surface of the shaft of tibia so from its origin and the insertion once contracted first of all it will flex the knee right because it's below the knee that means it's gonna flex the knee joint this is number one and also it will laterally rotate the thigh this is number two also it will abduct the thigh as well so it's abducting the thigh laterally rotate the thigh and flex the uh, knee of course if i would say uh, if the uh, knee uh, is flexed say here for example when you flex the knee that means you can rotate the leg so it will medially rotate the leg but once it flexed because when the knee is extended, it's locked. You cannot do an rotation. So anyway, so this arterius innervated by femoral nerve. Interesting muscle. Crossing, you see how to cross the thigh obliquely. Another muscle. It's the iliacus muscle. From its name, iliacus, it originates from the iliac fossa right of the hip bone and inserted with its sister because iliacus and sour and sous major those two sisters have the same insertion they inserted in the lesser trochanter of the femur so this is origin and insertion these two muscles share mainly the same function but not the innervation unfortunately anyway so these two sisters inserted in the same region and they have the same function so they consider the ilio we call them the two sisters we call them ilio sawas ilio sawas they are the chief flexor of the thigh so they are i would say the most powerful of the hip flexor with the longest range what does it mean it means for example they are strong a flexor of the hip joints so they flex the thigh on trunk and if the uh, thigh is a flex say it's a flex so they pull the trunk um, on the thigh against the thigh so it's important when you getting up from the bed so you moving your trunk and toward your thigh and or you flex the thigh toward your trunk this is when you're getting up from the bed right so you use the iliosaurus so always remember them when you're getting up from the bed so away from the south just iliacus iliacus innervated by the femoral nerve as well so the sous major, yes, this is the sous major, and it has also another little sister called sous minor. But in fifty, less than fifty percent of a human sous minor is uh, uh, sous major. Uh, you know, less than fifty percent of a human. I mean, the sous major are combined by sous minor. Anyway, forget now the sous minor. Let us focus on sous major. So we mentioned that it's a sister of Adiacus and it's originate from the side of vertebra from t12 as you see until l uh, uh, l5 i would say it's just indicated l4 but indeed other textbooks say l5 so also not just from the side of vertebrae but also from the intervertebral disc there plus to the transverse processes there So what about the insertion? We know that um, sous major has the same insertion of iliacus, very simple, lesser trochanter, the same function of iliacus as I mentioned, and but the nerve supply. 
the nerve you how can you remember that aviacus from femoral but psoas because it originates from the area nearby the lumbar so or from the lumbar and first thoracic so you have to expect that uh, it will take the innervation from l1 2 mainly and l3 lumbar plexus Another muscle that's located in the floor of femoral triangle, we'll talk about the femoral triangle in details, but this muscle is the pectineus, and from its name, it's a little small muscle here, attached to the superior pubic uh, ramus, or the superior ramus of the pubis, and inserted from its name in the pectineal line of the femur. You remember this is the head of the femur and neck and this is greater trochanter and so forth this is the shaft and this is the lateral trochanter and from lesser trochanter you have a line here moved um, from anterior to posterior this is the pectineal line that the pectineus muscle inserted there so this is the superior ramus anyway you can uh, watch the bones of the lower limb so the action of this muscle is to adduct. You imagine is the origin insertion. So once contracted, it adduct, adduct the thigh, right? Listen, this muscle, I would say, is a kind. Of, there is a controversy between authorities. For example, Gray's Gray's anatomy consider it um, with medial compartment, right? Because it's in the anterior medial border. So Gray's consider it. Um, from medial compartment, but more um, clinical anatomy, they consider it from the anterior flexor uh, compartment. So it's a transitional muscle between anterior and medial. However, not just this problem, but also the innervation of this muscle is varied, like mainly um, from femoral nerve but also it receives sometimes fibers from obturator nerve which is the chief the, the uh, obturator nerve the chief nerve for medial compartment right so we finished until now the sartorius iliacus somos major and victinius so we have this great big muscle most anteriorly so the muscle has four sepsis that's why we call it quadriceps that means that means heads right so quadri that means four so the muscle with four heads including or now we have four parts rectus femoris and you have vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and if you remove this, I mean rectus femoris part, you will get this. Again, this is the rectus femoris. So just behind it or below it, you have vastus intermedius. This is the vastus intermedius. This muscle, you know, completely innervated, say, by femoral nerve. So you notice that femoral nerve um, innervates most of the muscles of anterior compartment. So back again to this muscle. Look at the first one, which is the rectus femoris part, in which the femoris, uh, the uh, rectus femoris, um, has two heads up. One is the straight one that attaches to the anterior inferior iliac spine not superior no anterior inferior iliac spine so we find a function for this spine yes attached to the straight head of rectus femoris and the reflected head it will reflect it just superior to the acetabulum right and attached there this is the origin of rectus femoris what about the vastus intermedius i think it's better to look at it here this is the vastus intermedius so it originates from anterior and lateral surfaces of the shaft of the femur now that's the vastus 
intermedius. Now, what about the vastus medialis? Yes, this is the vastus medialis. You can see it here, and also it's uh, clear here. This is the vastus uh, medialis, in which it originates from the intertrochantric line that's here and because it's vastus medialis from the medial lip from the medial lip of linea aspera posteriorly on the other hand this is the vastus lateralis and here you can see the vastus lateralis as well so it's uh, it attached to because it's laterally so here is attached to the greater trochanter here and to the lateral lip of linea aspera posteriorly. So, vastus lateralis to the lateral lip of linea aspera, vastus medialis to the medial lip of linea aspera posteriorly. But the insertion is very simple and direct for this muscle because all of these uh, sepsis will unite and insert it in one tendon in which that known as quadriceps femoris tendon or the tendon of quadriceps femoris muscle so the quadriceps femoris tendon inserted in the pace and lateral side of the patella right and from patella there is another ligament well it's another story but there is another ligament that connects the apex of the patella to the tpl uh tuberosity here with that known as patellar ligament this is the patellar ligament so again um what else these uh muscles especially the the, the rectus femoris not just inserted the quadriceps femoris tendon yes it's a strong tendon and well known that unites all of these sepsis but also vastus medias and vastus lateralis um also send like retinacula right you see these things these are retinacula medial and lateral retinacula right so these medial and lateral retinacula um also connected to the tbm look at it here so this is the retinacula this is the retinacula of the um vastus medialis and this is the retinacula of the vastus uh, this is the vastus medialis and this is the retinacular of it and this is again retinacular for vastus lateralis that uh, uh, of course increase the uh, strength of the knee now because the you know the quadriceps femoris tendon that inserted in the patella and from the patella also connected to the um, tibial tuberosity by patellar ligament so to test because we know the quadriceps femoris um, muscle innervated by femoral nerve which is um, from l3 and l4 spinal segment so to test the femoral nerve to test the l3 l4 i mean spinal segments so you use the hammer to uh, tap on the uh, patellar ligament here and in this way the normal reflex can indicate a normal function of l3 and l4 spinal segment i mean femoral nerve shifting to um, another interesting compartment in the thigh which is the uh, medial compartment of the thigh you know it contains um, a couple of muscles which is uh, easy to remember those mainly because the medial group usually they function as adductor add adductor so they are adductor muscles you have one long one previous short and one huge large magnus right a plus to the gracilis and obturator externus well just a brief summary i know it's boring but uh i have to say that the uh, usually these muscles innervated mainly by obturator obturator uh, nerve and obturator vessels plus a branch of femoral artery known as deep artery of the thigh so 
Um, let me show you the first one, which is uh, really interesting uh, muscle. I like it, which is the gracilis. Gracilis, it's medially, um, usually uh, this uh, uh, muscle, as you see here, it originates from the body of uh, a pubis and the sometimes the inferior pubic ramus and inserted in the proximal upper part of the medial um, medial part of the shaft of the tibia do you remember the pis and serenus in which it's abbreviation for as there's sgt this area the insertion um pis and serenus is like um goose foot right was the location for insertion of three tendons including sg uh, T, I mean sartorius as you see here and behind it gracilis as you see here as well posterior to it the semitendinosus so three um, um, three ligaments just to remind you so it's big it becomes like easier to remember the insertion of um, the gracilis so um, this muscle again because in the medial compartment so it's innervated by obturator nerve and when you imagine when it's contracted it will adduct the thigh and some authors said yes it's also a flex partially flex the knee at the leg because it's below the knee so once contracted it pulled the leg like this so it's a little bit becomes like a flexed right so this is the sartorius now let us start with the um adductor group you have adductor longus adductor uh, previous here and adductor magnus in the background so i will start with the adductor longus yes this is the gracilis yes and this is the adductor longus in which you can see it here guys right so the adductor longus originates also from the body of the pubis close to the sartorius and insert do you remember the linea aspera yes you can divide the femur into three parts this is the first third and this is another third the middle third you can say second third and this is the lower third right so the adductor longus inserted in the linea aspera posterior in the middle one third of the shaft of the femur posteriorly and also um it from its name from its name adductor longus that means it that means it adducts the um hip adduct the hip and also medially rotated it now of course innervated by obturator nerve like gracilis so obturator nerve is the chief of the medial compartment so uh, another little small muscle from the adductor group, which is the adductor brevis, also originated from the body of pubis here and inserted in which third? In the upper, in the linea aspera posteriorly, in the upper one third of the femur, right? So, this is the uh, uh, adductor brevis that also innervated by obturator nerve and adduct and medially rotate, similar, similar to the adductor longus, adduct and medial rotate the thigh at um, hip joint now this is the really uh, interesting muscle that usually um, comes in mcq and in exams we ask uh, the student about that so this muscle is the adductor magnus from its name adductor also it's another sister of um, to the uh, adductor longus anteprevus, but this is magnus because it really is large, so it has two parts. One part, guys, here you can see it. One part is the adductor part, so this is the adductor part, and there is another part which is hamstring part, which is close to the posterior, close posteriorly, right? So this is the part of the hamstring part you see here. So it has two parts, and each part has different uh, 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 innervation. But before innervation, let us um, sh let me show you the origin and insertion of the adductor magnus, and I will start with the adductor part. Yes, this is the adductor part originates uh, uh, mainly from the ischiopubic ramus, 
Do you remember the inferior ramus of the pubis and the ramus of ischem? Yes. So this is the ischiopubic ramus. So from there, the adductor part originate and it inserted in the um, proximal part of the femur and in the linea aspera as well. But what about the hamstring part? Yes, this is the uh, this is the hamstring part that extend posteriorly here to uh, to originate from the um, I would say the skeletal tuberosity he is posteriorly right so but not shown this part not shown here covered by the adductor bars and it's inserted in the adductor tubercle you know the adductor tubercle on the medial side of medial condyle right is a protruded bone here called adductor tubercle for insertion of ad, for the insertion of hamstring part of adductor magnus now the innervation, the innervation of the adductor part, as usual, by obturator nerve. But the hamstring part, which is posteriorly nearby the hamstring muscle, so it's that means close to sciatic nerve, so it's innervated by sciatic nerve. And again, they adduct and mediate rotate the thiatic joint. So, the um, muscle that, uh, the last one, which is the obturator externus. I think you remember from a gluteal region, we talked about obturator externa, internus. But here, we are talking about an, a muscle that attached to the external surface, not the internal, external surface of obturator membrane and adjacent bones. That's why, because it's from the lateral surface of the lateral membrane, and just we call it external, external, um, uh, or obturator externus, right? Obturator externus, internus. No, that's from the inside, right? Anyway, so obturator internus, as I mentioned, originated from there and inserted in the trochanteric fossa, as you know. Trochanteric fossa. I think um, you can watch the. Um, lecture of the palm but here's the greater trochanter you, you move posterior you will find a fossa here known as trochanteric fossa so the tendon passes behind the neck of the femur you see that's in the background right so yes up to uh, uh, it's um, uh, innervated by obturator nerve and um, it's laterally when it's uh, contracted, you know, because it comes from the back. So because it comes from the back, uh, when it's contracted, it twists the femur like that. That means laterally rotate the thigh. So this is just the same if you need to look at them all at the same time. Um, Yes, I'm not going to talk about obturator nerve because it should be, uh, it must be covered by nerves of lower limb. Now, let us um, shift to talk about uh, uh, an important um, area uh, 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 in the anterior medial aspect of the uh, thigh. This area this is triangular area known as femoral triangle this is very important area especially clinically because it contains um, uh, an axis or a blood vessels that can be accessed for different kind of treatments so you we will define that area so femoral triangle is a depressed area as you see here that shaded in the uh, green color up here and it's located just you know the inguinal ligament this is the inguinal ligament as you know and the triangular area that just below the inguinal ligament in the anterior medial aspect of the thigh is known as triangular uh, femoral triangle so uh, the this is the area in general but let us dig deep in that and define its borders so it boundaries guys as i mentioned superiorly 
by the inguinal ligament, as you see, that extended from anterior superior spine to the pubic tubercle. And laterally, we have the sartorius muscle. This is the sartorius muscle, of course. And medially, you see here is just in the background, is the adductor longus muscle. So this is the adductor longus muscle. So this area is the femoral triangle. So there is an easy way to remember uh, the names of uh, boundaries there. So they are abbreviated in SAIL because the, um, the femoral triangle is really like uh, a SAIL. So we can, uh, you know, remember that as related to the sartorius and A related to the adductor longus and IL related to the inguinal ligament. So let us, uh, what's, yes, these are the borders of the, uh, femoral triangle but what about the floor of it look at the shadow there so what you have here you remember the iliacus muscle and psoas we called eu psoas muscle two sisters right in certain lateral trochanter so here is in the background you can see their muscle the muscle fiber of iliacus and um psoas major the edio psoas muscle this is number one and later medial to it you have the pectineus uh, muscle. This is a little muscle, the big tenius muscle that you know attached to the uh, pubis, superior pubis, and instead of the big tenial line. And medial to it, you have the adductor uh, longus muscle. So these uh, muscles form the floor of the femoral triangle. So after we define the borders and the floor, let us understand or let us define or enumerate what's the um, structure is related there, which is the most important thing here. So what's the content of femoral triangle? Yes, you can see here from lateral to medial, although I prefer always to mention from medial to lateral. So from medial here, you have the, you have the, uh, deep inguinal lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels as you see here in a green color so you have one right and lateral to it you have the uh, femoral vein and uh, its uh, proximal tributaries including the saphenous uh, great saphenous vein lateral to it you have femoral artery and of course there are a couple of branches not shown here Lateral to it, there is a femoral nerve. So you have lymph node and lymphatics, vein, artery, nerve. Then, but remember, uh, this is from medial to lateral. That means more medially is the vein. Lateral to it is the artery. Lateral to it is the nerve. Femoral vein, artery, and nerve. Very simple. Now, what I want to say here that the importance of defining the area and know where is that is some time to get an access there and to um, for different treatments. And most importantly, here is the femoral artery, right? This is the femoral artery. How can I? Uh, exactly palpate the femoral artery well it's very simple you know the border between the or part of the abdomen and the thigh when especially when it's flexed you can see or locate the location of inguinal ligament because especially if you define the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle but from anterior superior iliac spine it has extended to the symphysis pubis here so the midway the midway is the location of the femoral artery. You have to, you have to feel the pulsation. It's like um, it's different than the femoral vein because there is really um, uh, a pulse here that you can feel it. You can palpate it, right? So very simple. 
you know the anterior sphenoidal spine and symphysis of pubis in the middle here. So the midway in between is the location of femoral artery. Now, um, but these uh, structures, most of them are encircled and uh, uh, um, uh, covered by a fascia, enveloped by a fascia, a sheath. This sheath known as femoral sheath, right? It's known as a femoral sheath. As you see here, the femoral sheath um, encircles and wrap like the lymphatics, vein, and artery, femoral vein, I mean, and femoral artery, but not the nerve, not the femoral nerve, right? So the femoral nerve is not ensheathed, not covered by a femoral sheath. Anyway, so this sheath, uh, uh, the anterior border of this sheath, as you see here, is continuation or continued up with the transversalis fascia. The fascia of the abdomen let me show you here so you know you remember i think from the previous semester the layers of the abdomen and most you know deeply you have the uh, fascia transversalis which is before the extra peritoneal fat and peritoneum right this is continued as you see here down this is the femoral uh, sheath as you see here so the anterior part of the sheath, femoral sheath, continued with superiorly with the fascia transversalis, but the posterior one continues with the uh, fascia of the uh, ilium. We call it fascia ilica. So the, here is the posterior one that continues with the uh, iliaca fascia. Now, let me raise these things. Okay, uh, now this sheath, um, you know, as I mentioned, surrounded the femoral vessels, I mean, femoral vein and femoral artery and lymphatics, but not the nerve. And it's about, you know, say 2.5 uh, centimeters below the inguinal um, ligament. Now, uh, yes, we mentioned that, and now let us dig deep in that sheath. Look at it here with the green color, and just the uh, deep to it, you have a like a white color. The white color is the femoral sheath, right? This one, the white color is the femoral sheath, and it sends like septa between the femoral artery and another one between femoral artery and femoral vein and between femoral vein and the femoral canal here for lymphatics. Um, so the so you by this way when you say this is laterally and this is as you know medially, so you have three compartments: lateral compartment intermediate compartment and medial compartment the medial compartment would uh, 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 constitute of femoral canal that contains lymphatics the intermediate has femoral vein and the lateral compartment has femoral artery now um, the femoral nerve as you see here laterally is out of the game that means it's not encircled not in sheath with a femoral sheath not covered by femoral sheath so it's out right which is important and usually is a trick in the exams MCQs so yes let us now we already mentioned these things and you see the compartments now what's the story of the medial compartment that contains we call it femoral canal we call it we give it a name femoral canal in which it contains one deep inguinal lymph node and um, efferent lymphatic vessels it's short about 1.5 centimeter and uh, this canal, as I mentioned, contained um, 
the dipping on lymph node and inferent vasic vessels and fatty connective uh, tissue. So, this femoral canal, as you see here, has the upper opening here, right? Or the upper end, and the upper end of it, we call it femoral ring. Yes, this is the canal, it's okay, but the upper end of the canal is called femoral, femoral ring. So, the femoral ring has uh, relations. What the relation of the femoral ring, and I will tell you why we are really curious about, about this ring, because there is a herniation there, a femoral hernia. Femoral hernia, part of small intestine can lodged in this canal because this is the weakest part. So, anyway, the femoral ring, the, the borders of the femoral ring, anteriorly, as you see here, you have the inguinal ligament. Yes, this is the, sorry, this is the inguinal ligament. Yes, anteriorly. And you have, posteriorly, the superior ramus of pubis bone. Medially, you have the lacunar ligament, a continuation of inguinal ligament, the lacunar ligament, as you see here. Let me erase it. Okay, this is the this is the lacunar ligament medial to it, and laterally you have the femoral um, vein and the septum. This is the septum, and this is the femoral vein. So one thing else that the femoral um, the femoral canal, the lower end of femoral canal, is like fused with the femoral adventitia of um, adventitia of the femoral vein which is like give it a kind of extra strength or in order to decrease the opening and the weakness and the gap there right so which is a close of course to the saphenous opening we talked about this opening previously in the previous lecture um sorry in this lecture but um in the previous slides, I mean. So, um, part, uh, as I mentioned, of the femoral sheath um, that form this canal is not adherent to the wall of small because we mentioned, I don't know if we mentioned that or not, you know that this is the femoral artery, this is the femoral vein, and the femoral sheath that encircles these vessels, indeed it adheres to the external surface of those vessels, make there is no um, gap for any um, peritoneal contents to leak there. But unfortunately, medially, in the femoral ring here, the, the sheath, the femoral sheath is not adhere to the lymphatic vessels inside it. That means it's like loose structure there, and there is a gap that permits, as you see here, loops from the intestine to be passed through it and lodged there. This is the femoral hernia. This is the femoral hernia. You know now why we talked in details about all of these things? Yes, because the intestine can um, move like, and it can be like a small bulge, but it can be filled more and more when the lobe of intestine exit also the saphenous opening and went bulged outside and it can like a bulge or a mass on the anterior aspect of the thigh you why we um, uh, give it like extra focus on uh, femoral sheath and especially the femoral canal look at it here um, if you want to dig deep in the um, hernia you can watch the um, uh, lecture about the anterior abdominal wall so that there is uh, much of details there but let me remind you this is the inguinal uh, ligament and we mentioned that there is a femoral sheath here in which there is a femoral artery, femoral vein, and there is a femoral, I'll say like this, the femoral um, canal. So in this canal, you know, there is lymphatic, and this is the weakest area, and in which there is loops of intestine can pass through this weak area. Look at the neck 
of the herniated sac. Let me erase these things. So the neck of the herniated sac, once it's located at the first below the inguinal, the level of inguinal ligament, so you remember the femoral sheath, then, oh, yes, it's, um, you will say, it's inferior and lateral to the pubic tubercle. If it's inferior and lateral to pubic tubercle, it's femoral hernia. But if the neck of the sac, uh, um, it's above and medial to the pubic tubercle, above, and medial, the opposite I mean, above and medial, it's the inguinal hernia. However, the femoral hernia, it looks like at the first small because the sac is inserted inside the femoral canal. But once it's passed down and bulged from the saphenous opening that's located there, it becomes like more prominent, like in this case, right? So again, here is what I mentioned about the neck of the sac once it's yes inferior and lateral to the pubic tubercle, it's femoral hernia, but once above and medial uh, pubic or to the pubic tubercle, it's the inguinal hernia. So um, here is guys uh, uh, another example I'll show you the. Uh, uh, inguinal hernia I was polished and can extend to the scrotum right and here is the femoral hernia below the inguinal uh, ligament right as uh, the neck of the sac below if says pubic shape pubic tubercle it's um, below and lateral so this is the femoral hernia here is an example of femoral hernia this is look at it here uh, I was bulged, of course, in the um, uh, in the femoral canal, this loop of uh, intestine, right? And this is femoral hernia here. Look at this is a testis, right? If we continue just downward from the apex of the femoral triangle here, we will pass it through intramuscular, intramuscular. Um, uh, canal uh, that's known as adductor canal so these wide dotted line indicate to the um, these lines indicate to the um, uh, the adductor canal so the adductor canal as you see here which is behind the sartorius that's why sometimes this canal called the sub sartorial canal because it's just behind or below the sartorius behind the sartorius muscle so this intramuscular passage is deep to the sartorius and a major neurovascular pendle pass from the femoral at uh, the end of femoral triangle to the of course pass it through the one third of the uh, uh, of the thigh so uh, it extends, as I mentioned, from the apex of a femoral triangle until it reaches this opening, the adductor hiatus. So the adductor canal is a passageway to the um, from femoral triangle to the adductor hiatus. And you know the structures pass from adductor hiatus back to the popliteal fossa. Now. There are also boundaries for this intramuscular um, uh, passage, uh, passageway. So if we take a cross section from the thigh here in the mid of this canal, adductor canal I mean. So this is anterior, lateral, posterior, and there is medial, right? So you look into the inferior surface of, there is an inferior, your inferior surface of that cross section, right? You're looking from here, right? So... You will see here is the femur, and this is the adductor canal, in which it contains a couple of structure. We'll talk about them, but let us define the relation of this uh, adductor canal. So, uh, I would say first, anteriorly, because this is anterior, right? Anteriorly and laterally, you have the vastus medialis, but you know that medially, you have the sartorius, as you remember, this is the sartorius, so it's medial to it. And this is the adductor um, longus that's located 
um, of course posterior to it so this is the floor of it this is the adductor longus posteriorly the floor of it so what's the contents of this uh, of this uh, adductor canal indeed you remember the continuation of the vessels pass from there from femoral triangle to the popliteal uh, fossa so you have the femoral artery of course as you see here you have the femoral vein you have deep lymphatic vessels always yes and I think you remember, this is the femoral nerve right so there is a branch from femoral, femoral nerve known as saphenous nerve saphenous nerve that um, accompanies the um, of course the uh, um, uh, of these structures and of course there is a nerve here you can see also other than the saphenous nerve you have two nerves one for vastus medialis and anterior division of obturator nerve so these structures located in the adductor um, canal so once you pass or once these structures pass through the adductor canal uh, they will pass they will reach the adductor hiatus so this hiatus is a gap indeed opening or a gap between do you remember the adductor magnus yes it has two parts this is the adductor part right and this is the and this is the hamstring part shown here so so the adductor hiatus is a gap located between the insertion of the um, the aponeurosis of adductor part of adductor magnus and the ha insertion of the um, hamstring part because it has two parts hamstring part of adductor magnus so you have a muscle known as adductor magnus we mentioned that before a couple of slides it has two parts adductor part and it has hamstring posterior part right so this is the insertion of adductor part here and here is the insertion the adductor tubercle here the hamstring part of that muscle so in between there is a gap here known as adductor hiatus so the adductor hiatus is you know that the uh, adductor tubercle that's located okay, medial right so it's located just superior and lateral to the adductor um, a tubercle in which the femoral artery and femoral nerve especially that pass from adductor canal will pass through adductor hiatus now to, and they go back to the popliteal fossa lastly uh, what, uh, uh, what we have here what remains here is the posterior compartment of the thigh so again you know this is the thigh so it has three compartments we finished the anterior one and we finished the medial compartment still we have the most interesting part which is the posterior compartment of the um, posterior compartment of the thigh so um, let me uh, start with the general overview about the content of the posterior you are looking to the um, gluteal region and the thigh posteriorly so we have muscles vessels and nerves and the muscles we call these mu the muscles of posterior commodity of the thigh and we call them hamstrings muscle hamstring muscles right so they are biceps femoris and you see here this is the uh, long head of biceps femoris and because it has long head and short head so laterally you have the biceps femoris this is number one and medially you have a semimembranosus muscle this is the border of semimembranosus muscle and above it there is a semitendinosus muscle well i'm a muscle like a tendon right plus you have the adductor magnus muscle in which i would like here to focus on the um, hamstring part the part of adductor magnus posteriorly well vessels we have um perforating branch of deep artery of thigh which is a, the deep artery of thigh is a branch of femoral artery and it has perforating a branch to supply the 
uh, posterior compartment and nerves very clear that we have the longest nerve in our body which is the sciatic nerve that divides into tibial and common fibular or you can say either you can say fibular or peroneal the same right common peroneal nerve so i would like first when you uh, to remind you or to give you this note that when you say hamstring muscle the the, the muscle posterior compartment you have to remember the origin and insertion to understand their function in which their function really pretty easy and direct how look at their insertion mainly below the level of the knee that means when these muscles contracted they will flex the leg right so the leg will be flexed right at the knee joint also when they contracted they pull the hip to the back that means they extend the thigh at the level of hip joint and they flex the leg at the level of knee joint just imagine when they contracted and what's the then you can conclude what the function of those muscles so let us start with the first one the lateral one the biceps femoris not biceps brachii that's in your upper limb but here you have a muscle related to the femur to the femur so i call it biceps femoris it has two heads so you have short head as you see here and you have a long head so the long head at the originates from ischial tuberosity while the short head originated from the linea aspera and lateral supracondylar ridge because lateral these muscles mainly laterally so linea aspera and the lateral supracondylar ridge a continuation of linea aspera inferiorly so both they inserted in the head of fibula so when we say biceps femoris we have to remember the that this muscle has two heads and laterally so now you look into the posterior surface of it so this is the long head and this is the short head inserted in the head of the fibula so because of that you have to know that the long head innervated by the tibial division of sciatic nerve while the short head which is close to the fibula innervated by common fibular branch right common fibular branch of sciatic nerve now what about the function when you know they originated from here and there and inserted laterally that means when this muscle contracted first of all it will extend the thigh that means moving the uh, when they ex look up let me erase these things so imagine when it's contracted here so they will pull the thigh posterior like that that means extend the hip plus it's laterally inserted laterally and it's laterally indeed so it will move the the thigh laterally that means laterally rotated so extend and lateral rotate the thigh but as it's inserted below the knee that means once contracted it will flex the leg flex the leg at the level of knee joint yes so this is the biceps femoris and you can of course uh, see the tendon the distal end of this tendon here right which is close to the common fibular nerve that passes close to the head of fibula right so anyway another muscle which is the semitendinosus this is the semitendinosus muscle which is like a tendon that's why it's called semitendinosus again originates from ischial tuberosity because you know you remember the um biceps femoris yes and also the semitendinosus originates from ischial um tuberosity and inserted now medially we had to shift to the media or do you remember the s g t and the pis and serenus the insertion of sartorius 
gracilis and semitendinosus. Yes, this is the tendon of semitendinosus that inserted in the um, upper part of medial surface of the tibia, of the shaft of the tibia, right? With sartorius and the gracilis. So it's close to be, um, of course, um, innervated by the tibial division of sciatic nerve. Now its function um, also direct. It will flex the leg because it's below the knee, right? When it's contracted, yes, it flexes the leg, and also it extends the um, the hip as well. So moving the the lower limb posteriorly, that means extends the hip and flex the knee. But what? else because it's medially so once contracted it will pull the thigh like that that means medially moving the rotate the lower limb medially right medial rotation which is opposite to the the biceps femoris that laterally rotate the lower limb so here is the surface anatomy. You can see the tendon when you when you, when you stand like this on the tip of your fingers. You will get uh, the hamstring muscles contracted and the tendon of biceps femoris laterally is shown, and the tendon of semigendinosus as well on the other side. They create like eleven number eleven, right? So and in between there is a popliteal fossa here. So. Just remove the semitendinosus, you will find a muscle that flat in shape similar to the membrane. This is the semimembranosus. Semimembranosus, similar to the membrane, also originated from ischial tuberosity and inserted in the medial condyle of the tibia, a little bit up, right? Because it gives the tendon of semimembranosus gives laterally an oblique bobliteal ligament that enhances the capsule of the back of the knee. We mentioned that in details in the in the knee joint. You can watch the knee joint and the ligament of the knee joint in another video. So again, yes, similar to the semimembranosus, semimembranosus innervated by tibial division of sciatic nerve and has mainly it has the similar function of the semitendinosus this is another view showing the sciatic nerve with the common fibular and common tibial look at the location of the tendon of biceps femoris in relation to the common fibular nerve Just the last, the last part, uh, the last muscle that, or part of that, of the muscle that can seen from the back, which is part from the adductor magnus, large muscle. Yes, we mentioned the, we talked about it before a couple of slides, and we mentioned it has two parts, adductor part already, and we mentioned, we explained that, and there is another part, which is the hamstring part, the posterior one hamstring part that attached originates from ischial tuberosity again and it inserted as we mentioned earlier in the adductor tubercle of femur so this part is not really adducting but mainly it extends mainly it extends the um the thigh right move it posteriorly at the level of hip joint so thank you and uh, hope you find value in it thank you